or what a treat you're in for. Please help me in energetically welcoming Adele Adele. Well, I rejoice that I get to be here with this fabulous parish. Heard a lot about you. We came two or three times to your parish. We live right next door to All Souls in Sanford. And very honored that you do so much good work. I see the circles back there. So, and the money, we're gonna split the money, goes to the homeless, the circle that deals with the homeless. We'll have time, I hope, for, for some questions, some comments. Hopefully, I've stimulated you a bit. And if time, I'll read a bit of, from my book. He didn't like what she had done. And so he leaned down to this little girl and said, who do you think you are? Leandra Carroll was her name. And she felt offended. She felt fear. She was only nine years old. And she thought to herself at the same time, this is a very important question. I'm going to think about it when I'm alone. Just who do we think we are? We are so much more than who we think we are. And tonight, since most of us are Catholic, what kind of a Catholic do we think we are? Better yet, what kind of a Catholic are we becoming? That's a question that I want to ask myself and I ask you to ask that, for we're always in process. We're never finished. If anybody here thinks they're finished, put their hand up. Nobody. In this talk, I'd like to share how I have been informed by the small c of Catholicism. Yes, I'm a Catholic, but the small c, which is consciousness, connection, caring, communion, the c's that make our virtue alive, that make our soul so much wider. And then in the middle, I'd like to talk about how money, good old money, has become, for me, a spiritual entity. It's not just, got a dollar? Here it is. It's so much more, and I'd like to share with you what I've learned. And lastly, I'd like to discuss more what that small C might mean in your life, that consciousness, that caring, and how you want more of that in order that you move closer to God. That is happening all the time. Opportunities abound. Now in this talk, which I'm just so happy to be here, this is great, I'm going to say a few things and I'm going to say Alleluia after them. And I want some participation. So when I say, for example, let's have an example. When I say, women make wonderful saints, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I've been told. That's wonderful. Oh, I won't have any problem with this group. Usually there's a little timidity. All right, my journey. Baptized in the Greek Orthodox Church, my father was Syrian, he was an immigrant, and they were Christian in Syria. And, but when we came to Orlando, there was no Greek Orthodox Church, so he sent me to the Northside Baptist Church, you might know, by Colonial Town. I used to go to Sunday school there. One day I came home and said something, he called it a dirty joke. He was so upset, he yanked us out of public school and put us in St. James on Cathcart Street over there in Orlando. And all I had to say about that was, Alleluia. Well, I began to love the nuns and I began to love Catholicism. I hadn't been exposed to that. And I love the rituals, the hymn singing, 
and I determined that I was going to be a nun. I don't even have to give this talk. <laughs> You guys know exactly what I want to say. That's right. And at 21, I did it. I walked into those convent doors, asked for the habit, and wrapped myself up in that black habit and wore it for 16 wonderful years. I never regretted one moment of that time I was a sister. It was a wonderful time for my soul. Meditation, hymn singing. They gave me a music degree. I went off and got a music degree at Manhattanville College. I was so blessed in that community. But then, the hills are alive <laughs> with the sound of music. Just like Maria, I walked out into the world again. Although, unlike Maria, I held three jobs. <laughs> and that's when money began to be an issue for me. Sidebar, not everybody has an issue with money the way I did. Some think it's wonderful, they love it, they use it, and they're not conflicted. But sometimes, I've met Christians who do have a problem. You know that biblical quote, the love of money is the root of all evil. You've been told well, haven't you? <laughs> but I have learned to see it in a different light. So I began to have three jobs, and it was very confusing for me, so I had to have a conversation with God. Hello, God, I'm confused. This money that's coming into my life, I mean, can I still be your girl? Can, can we still get along if I earn a salary? No answer. <laughs> then, to make matters more confusing, I got an inheritance. More money. Some people would love that. It just was more confusing for me, so I had to call God again. God. Now I have a pile of money, and I have a bank account, but can I still be your girl? No answer. Maybe the answer came quietly, because I got a phone call from a friend who said, you've been working in prejudice reduction. You've been helping people see each other as people instead of as whatever, you know, black, white, Indian, whatever. So I went to, he said, go and work with these friends that are working for peace in the Mideast, Jews and Arabs, Arab Christians, Muslims. So I stepped into that door, and it was there that I discovered the beauty of money because we were giving scholarships. People, kids were going to school because of what we could do. And we were sponsoring these workshops. These workshops were bringing Arabs and Jews together around a table and to talk and listen. Sidebar, you need to know, and you probably already do know, that there's a lot of work to be done in bridging the conflicts that go on with, and I'm an Arab, with Arabs and Jews. And we began to do it. It wasn't easy at first. The Jews said, you want to destroy Israel. The Arabs said, you took our land. It was a tough task. But by listening, by training them to listen to each other and the pain, because that's where we all bond, is in our pain together. People that had been enemies became friends. It was a wonderful, for me, a wonderful experience. And my Christianity was very much alive there. I found Christ in that work. In fact, I told the woman who was the head of the foundation, Haiti, you're more like Christ than some of the Christians I know. She was so kind and good. She didn't miss a beat. And she said, well, of course. He's one of our boys. 